Hey, do you want to make a 2D platformer, but you don't know where to start? I will show you a way to do a 2D platformer, something like this. So, something really basic, but without writing a single line of code. But time is rare, so let's get started. 1909 games. Let's make games. Bold is free now. Unity bought Bold, so now we can use it for free. And before I use Playmaker, but I really wanted to know, is Bold something like similar? And I think Bold is different, but really cool also. And today I want to show you how to do something like that in a pretty easy way, you know, because visual scripting is much more easy for me than the traditional way of scripting because you can see what you do. Like it's visualized, <laughs> you know, pretty easy. As a human is just, you know, when you want to start something, you want to see really big changes pretty fast. And that is what you can do with visual scripting. So if you want to see, oh, I don't know, is maybe uh, game development something for me or not? So watch this video and we will use the art kit I did last time in the last video. So it's a pretty small art kit, but you can see the video, something like that. So if you don't know how to do art for 2D games, then just watch it because you can watch this and afterwards you can watch this video and then you know how to do a basic 2D platformer. So let's get started. So let's start with a new Unity project and go to the package manager to install Bold. And here you need to go to my assets and when you are in my assets, then, or in your assets, <laughs> then just search for Bolt and download and import it. I already downloaded it, so I just needed to import it. Pretty easy stuff, right? Then you go to tools and Bolt install and import the rest. <laughs> and that is how you import Bolt. Pretty easy, right? But after you import it, you are not done. You are going to the bold setup wizard and you have the choice between human naming and programmer naming. We are choosing programmer naming because we want to learn better and I think it's pretty, it's not harder to learn that and you know, it's better because if you want to learn C sharp, then it's easier with that. And the rest you just go next and generate. I think you should not at least for the beginning you should not change anything with that and you are done. And then you make a new folder in your assets and call it sprites. So that's what I do. And another new folder with bold stuff. <laughs> we need that later. So yeah, later. And we do in to the sprites folder, we put our sprites, whatever you want to use. I used, as I told you, what I did last video. So if you want to watch it, watch it. And we have a background and so let's call it uh, back, 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 oh man, <laughs> background. Okay, and after doing that, we have another sprite sheet and that is with our world and our player. It's pretty simple. And we use crunch compression and you see it's from 2 MB to 80 kilobyte or something like that and makes the sprite mode to a multiple apply it and slice it automatic and like this you have not just a big picture you have lots of small pictures that you can use or sprites not pictures sorry that you can use to build the world and build the player and the player and the world we do uh, scale to uh, 0.5 because we want um, to have it a little bit smaller than it is and sort it in the layers and so on so it's just basic stuff and I make a folder with prefabs and call it prefabs and yeah, I like it like that. And after that I gave the player and the platformer just just normal box colliders and the player got a rigid body 2D. Um, and with that he gets physics, <laughs> you know, he gets just physics, so easy. You have gravity scale and so on, you don't need to change really something for what we are doing right now. And then you can build the world with your, yeah, with your platforms or whatever you have. And I just make a really, really simple world and we now have physics and we have a game, right? So that's it. Our game is done. <laughs> no, not really. We need to go and make a flow machine and we make a new folder, uh, not a new folder. So we use our old folder, bold stuff. And 
make a new flow graph and we have here start you see uh, calls the first frame in the machine blah 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 we don't need this in this case and we just need the update function and we make a new um, get access thing you know we need to get an access you know if we want to get it right or left we want to have the horizontal axis so we get the axis input with that get axis and it's easy like that but we don't move like that so we go to object object and do a speed variable that will be a float and a movement variable that will be a float float is 1.1 int is 1 2 3 you know something like that and then we get the speed so get the variable variable speed and we can define it and i put it to five you see it right there i make the variable to five and so we multiply the get axis that will be one if you press right or left so one or minus one and multiply it with the speed so like that we can say okay the speed will be five or minus five or you can do it 10 or minus 10 and so you can um, set the speed that's a pretty easy way to do it and we set a variable and that is a movement variable we just did so the other float variable and we set that variable to the speed variable so we have the same variable <laughs> at the end uh, but with two because we need to use it later and after doing that that's pretty easy we set the velocity and that's pretty important because when we do that we can move the player you know that it's that easy <laughs> so easy so we can um, make a velocity set function and get the variable that is called of course movement and we connect it to our well you know we have x and y so we need to make a vector 2 and we connect it to the vector 2 and we will use a vector 2 where we can set the x and y separate so we you know put the x value for the movement value so that we connect that and all of that we connect with the set velocity and if we have done that we have the y value and that's zero and that's bad because we cannot fall because my <laughs> value is zero and so we um, get the velocity of our rigid body um, and after getting the velocity we need to just separate it to just getting the y velocity because we don't need the x velocity so get the y velocity out of that um, vector 2 and put that into the y and like that we have the problem done pretty easy way it's um, yeah it's, it's, it's easy 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 <laughs> and what we can see now when we play the game that we can move and that is I think that's a really great thing okay we cannot move sorry <laughs> we need to um, you know we haven't um, put the update function to the rest so just let's do that but now now I promise you we can move and I think that's a great feeling when I did something like that the first time I was like oh my god this possibilities endless you know okay and you have the first problem <laughs> you're rotating and you don't want that so a freeze is a rotation in the rigid body so under constraint freeze rotation sorry and then that and so we will sort it a little bit that it looks nice you know we need a sexy shape right here and then we want to um turn the player to the direct so let the player look in the direction he's moving and we do it with local scale so set the local scale but we just want to set the local scale in the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis will be the same like before and so we do a new vector 3 set the z-axis to 1 the x-axis we um, leave it like it is right now and the y-axis we put to 0 0.5 because it's not 1 because you remember we just did the player smaller so 
we need to do it to 0 0.5 and we do now a get movement so get the movement variable and we want to compare this movement variable to zero so we we connect this movement variable to a and b will stay zero and like this we can see is the player faster than zero so faster than zero or slower than zero and so we select now that so what we get is a bool variable is true or not true and we select now the true variable to be a minus 0 0.5 so if it is true that the player is not uh, is slower than zero then we put the float variable to minus 0 0.5 so the x variable we will connect it and if it is false so if it is bigger than it then we set uh, the x to 0 0.5 and like this, the player is turning. You see, easy stuff. It's not too hard. Um, the logic behind it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, interesting. But he cannot walk through the wall. And so he needs to jump. So let's get on button input jump. That's defined by Unity. So the jump button is space. And um, I don't know. I, I think it's just space. And so then we add a force add force to D with the mode impulse. The force, let's put it to 10 and that's it. <laughs> Connect it, you know, that's easy. And you have a jumping character. That is the whole secret of jumping. Yeah, you know, yeah, not really because you can jump and jump and jump in the air and jump in the air. So you have uh, unlimited jumps and that's not good because that's not how jumps works. Not for humans, not for, maybe for, for, for birds because they fly. In. So they jump a lot? No, not really. So let's make a unit that is called, um, let's see, I remember. Wait, 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 circle cast. And you know why we do a circle cast and not a ray cast? Because our player is really, really not thin. <laughs> and you know, a circle is better for him. And we want to get the position of the player and set this position to the origin of the circle cast that we have the same position. Pretty easy, right? And what's important is that we have a layer mask because if we, let's say we land on an enemy and we don't want to be able to jump on an enemy or we don't want to jump on water or something. So we need a layer mask and set that layer mask to ground. We don't have a ground layer, so let's quickly make a ground layer. But first let's set the radius of the circle cast to 0 0.5, the distance to 1.1 or 1.2, something like that, the direction, direction in the y axis to minus one. And then we do a new layer that is called ground. Pretty easy. It's not important that it has a capital T at the end, so let's make it right. And like this, we can now choose the ground layer for a layer mask. and. We make a raycast to D, an expose raycast to D, and we have a lot of options, but we really need just the collider option. So, is the circle cast colliding with a ground layer object collider? That is what we get, and we make a not equal thing, and if it is not equal so if it is null not equal so double no <laughs> you know then we have a yes so it is touching the ground and then we can jump right and so let's do a branch a branch makes your bool variable true or false so you get a bool variable and you can choose truth or false and we don't need a false we just need if it is true then we can jump if it is false we don't care you know and like this, we can jump just once. <laughs> Great! It's so easy to make a game with Bolt. No, I think you really need to learn a lot for Bolt 2. If you just start, it is a lot of stuff to learn. And I think what we have done today is a lot. It is maybe too much and a little bit too fast. But I think if you just 
pause the video and go on with the video, you can make a game like this in, I think I did it in 20 minutes, um, and that is a long time. <laughs> I, I, I take my time. <laughs> um, and as you see here, we now have a character that can jump, move, and slide the wall. Uh, for that you just need to do uh, to make a new physics material 2D and set the friction to zero and put it onto the player's rigid body 2D. That's all. So I hope you liked the video and if you do, so like the video, subscribe to the channel because I want to do much more videos right now. I'm really motivated to uh, just go in and make videos, videos more and more. This tutorial was like something really basic so really, really basic. And the next things I want to do will be more the entertaining, you know, more, more like not tutorials, but I want to do tutorials, but the next things will be still a little, little bit different. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can click somewhere over here. And if you want to see the video uh, YouTube suggests for you from my channel, then watch the video. I don't know. So see you next time. Bye.